Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to Unit 2 on ideation. What we're going to cover today are, in addition to the ideation um, concept and how a new product is developed, we're going to also go through some general terms. And at the outset, I can tell you this is probably going to be the extent of which we're going to cover vocabulary, per se, prior to actually getting into the course content as it applies to drawings. Um, but this part is important in that it lays the groundwork for everything that follows afterwards, in so far as manual as well as automated drawing, drawings are concerned. So ideation defined. Basically, the best way I can define it is the way that I have it um, described on this document. By the way, we're going to open with this Word doc, which basically um, lays out the groundwork for what we're going to cover with this unit. And then we're going to go through two quick PowerPoints that one exemplifies ideation and the other kind of goes beyond ideation in defining some terms associated with new product development. Um, and then we'll lastly show an image that is pretty much kind of like a flow chart, you know, how the new product is, is developed and changes hands from one phase gate, if you will, to the next. But um, again, what we're trying to do is provide you with a basic understanding of design in so far as how designs initially start out by way of a creative idea but then come into being bottom line is this no matter how many buzzwords you associate with ideation it is the understanding of how a process that originates in somebody's mind can be created based on an individual or team's perspective. And this applies to any industry. The industries that I've been a part of and many more that, that go well beyond um, the, the technical acumen that you come out of this class with. In this process, you're going to be turned on to understanding the creative process to, one, understand the problem or a concept, two, explore it, three, define it, and then ideating it, which amounts to the first phase gate, which is what I like to refer to as design intent or concept. Without a concept or a design in mind, you can't hardly sketch anything. But then we're going to sketch it, and that's the second phase gate. By the way, the next section we'll get into once we master measurement, we'll get into sketching um, from both a 2 and 3D perspective. But at this stage, an individual or team could... Go about creating the sketch in either 2D or 3D. Just take it, take it at that for now. Third phase gate, you would then take this design into AutoCAD. Now, could you go directly into a 3D modeler? Yes, but for the sake of our purposes in this class, these are going to be our phase gates. And they're going to be such that once we define them here and now, you're going to come to apply them in this way for every project you create moving forward. Fourth phase gate, and one that you'll eventually work towards, but not at the beginning of this class, but towards the end, is the 3D design and inventor. And the reason for that is you could fully vet out a design in two-dimensional layout form, but you cannot easily create that design from either a CNC machine or a 3D printer without the physical solid modeling kernel that inventor offers or another 3D modeler like it. And that leads us to our fifth phase gate, which is, again, output. Whether it's additive machining, which is that of the 3D printer, or, you know, machining rem metal removal, which is that of the CNC machine in the back, you're defining the activities that are going to create the actual part. Um, these are the types of challenges that real-world professionals face. And, okay, here's, here's my overall definition. Know this definition for sake of a quiz and eventual testing that comes at the end of the quarter. Now what I want to prompt you with is this idea in terms of ideation, and that is thinking outside the box in terms of an outside classroom. This is an actual problem that we solved with the Design for Manufacturing Club a couple years ago, and last I heard it was going to get built. But what I'm going to present you with is an actual solution to a problem that 
came out of industry when I was challenged and others like me with forging a tibia blank as opposed to machining one out of a solid. If you look at this particular design at the outset, it does not look like one that you would want to machine out of a solid block, does it? The reason why you would not want to machine this out of a solid block is because why? Why do you think? Anybody? The reason being is that you do not want you do not want to machine this out of solid block because you have a lot of material waste. What if I were to what if I were to encourage you to created out of a forging. Let me get this going once more. If you were to machine, if you were to forge this in a blocker die, two sets of dies, as you see it here, can you appreciate how this might actually save material check out this slide see how the material is actually moving into the stem in such a way where it's making for a extended flash but you're not having to waste time or material in machining it out of a solid and the same can be set for subsequent hits you may have to go through several dies to get the actual shape, like you see here, but you can minimize the amount of excess waste by going this route. You see where I'm going with this? So that's just a quick little demo on that guy. Now, next. Building or understanding a sustainable design Let me switch these up real quick. Now I just want to go over these, these simple terms. One, explaining the following. Industrial design, sustainable design, building information model, rapid prototyping, and lead. We're going to define these five terms. Industrial design is a fundamental collaboration between dissimilar designs with the intent to benefit both the user and manufacturer. Cross-departmentally, you're going to have representatives out of design, manufacturing, and quality and even to include marketing if the deliverable is for end use. Sustainable design. Once a design is in the pipeline to be produced, this is the ability to allow for continuous improvement over the course of a design's life cycle. Meaning if it's in market, in the market already for maybe five years, over that term of five years, you want to be able to make sure that you can make improvements to costs. Um, Minimize waste, like we just demonstrated with the tibia design. And also you want to consider the environment with respect to sustainability as well. Next, building information model. This is going to come up quite a bit. Building information model, or also known as the acronym BIM, is shared knowledge as a shared knowledge resource for information about a facility forming a reliable base for decisions during its life cycle. It's defined as existing from earliest conception to demolition. BIM, BIM products include that of Revit and Inventor, where you can actually collaborate on these three out of these 3D modelers um, and share information 
through the cloud where you can have additional in individuals um, involved in the BIM model. Also, Unigraphics uses a product called Team Center, and I just reference these because these are um, BIM software packages that I've worked with before. Rapid prototyping, which is supported by building information modeling, is staged within the R&D structure, and it's, it's really short for quick turnaround on concepts that have already been designed but are still in the tweaking process. So typically 3D printing is a very, very popular route to go with this, but it can also be an iterative machining process to vet out a design. So in other words, you could be working on a net shaped hip or knee design, and you might be cutting it out of aluminum as opposed to the final end material titanium. It's typically monitored by a new product development team and it's produced by a cross-functional team as well. And then the last definition I really want to cover with this slide is LEED. Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. It's basically third-party certification and it's a nationally accepted organization for design, operation, and construction of high-performance green buildings. And anymore, you cannot be in the building industry anymore in North Carolina, for one, without having this certification. And this is an individual website that will pull up rather quickly that we have actually come to work with in the past. Um, Kevin Furman, architect. Um, he's a local architect. He works down on Martin Street, and um, you can see that um, he had the first pass of a house in Southeast North, North Carolina. He's LEED certified, and these are the credentials in some of the projects that he's worked on in the past. And he'll be out to visit us, and not to mention, he's one, too, that is often on site um, and willing to accept us in visiting his site as well. So it's a little about Kevin. And last thing I wanted to show you is... This is not all that unlike what you would typically see in industry as far as the developmental process is concerned. It's not unusual to see brainstorming and ideation defined on a flowchart and then works from concept to design of concept for the sake of proof of design. You may go through many iterations before you get the development work you need in before you go through a commercial launch. However, um, during all this time, it can cycle back. Notice the, the, the arcs the, that, that speak to concept design and development. This is a continuous loop that is interchangeable and product typically lives in this cycle. That's everything that I have for today.